Okay, so here we have the core, the refractory based core of the swirl furnace. As you can see, the inlet here is tangential. If we look at the inside of the core, the inlet is actually tangential to the inner refractory surface. And furthermore, it's been built up so that the flame is absolutely forced into a swirl pattern and there are actual channels that have been carved, though you may not be able to see them. There are... okay, here we go. There are actual channels that have been carved into the inner structure of the core, the refractory core. Um, and they've been specifically carved so that the flame has, uh, has a forced path, so that it has an upward twirl, so that it rises and it spins and that was the purpose of shaping the inner refractive chamber. If we take a look at the outlet, that also has had additional cement applied right there, which uh, seals off more of the um, uh, the fluidic interaction zone between the bottom inlet and the outlet, so that it makes it more, more of a um, more of a forced path for the flame to follow. And these raised surfaces up here are simply for uh, resting the crucible so that we can actually easily pick up the crucible, the graphite crucible we'll be using. Um, I got these off of Amazon. These are two inch inner diameter graphite crucibles and you can pick them up. I think now they're $25, but I picked them up in December when they were $15. Uh, overall, they shouldn't cost more than $30 a piece, and they're really durable. They're very, very high temperature. Graphite is among the best materials for casting. Well, let's take another look here at this. And as you can see, it's been fairly built up with refractory cement. But even though it's been built up with multiple layers of fired refractory, um, there is a thermal insanity going on here because on the inside of the furnace uh, temperatures commonly reach 2500 to 3000 degrees and at the same time while that's happening on the outside of the th furnace um, temperatures reach about 200 to 300 degrees surface temperatures so right there, within less than an inch of space, less than an inch of space, there's a over 2,000 degree differential. And any time you have a gradient that big, that means there's going to be thermal stress, m massive thermal stress going on, um, particularly since the, the twirl furnace, uh, or rather the swirl furnace, um, applies that heat more evenly across a broader surface area and not, not just concentrated in one corner of a cylinder. So what needs to happen here is more thermal protection, obviously, to keep the outer concrete shell, which is yet to be applied, a Portland cement shell, to keep that shell um, thermally protected from potential uh, overheating for to protect against cracking, and at the same time, the, the thermally strong yet structurally weak core cement, refractory cement, needs to be armored by rebar to keep it, even if it cracks, even if cracks develop over time, um, it needs to have a steel um, structure holding it in place. So that is where this project is currently. Today we'll be adding the layer of cement, which is actually Rutland furnace cement. And this is uh, the consistency of, of almost taffy, I would say, wet taffy. It is thinnable by water. It's rated for temperatures uh, by itself up to 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. However, it will be augmented by large-grained perlite. And this is perlite. Um, which is a volcanic, think of it as Rice Krispies in the volcanic rock version of Rice Krispies. It's a very, uh, very, very light 
very extremely heat resistant material. It just glows and it's hollow inside. It's porous. Water can get right in and it's usually used in gardening. In fact, as you can see from the marketing information on the outside of this particular package, this is marketed by miracle Grow, and it's perlite, but it is a volcanic rock. It is, um, that is what, I mean, this entire cup weighs, I would say, less than half an ounce, or even, even less than that, maybe a quarter of an ounce. So it's, it's very light. It's like, almost like styrofoam. Think volcanic styrofoam. That's what this is like, volcanic, um, empty styrofoam. If pumice could be made into styrofoam, that would be similar to what this is. And it comes in different grades. As you can see, there's, there's fine grades, and it's just mixed. For every one unit, for every one unit of cement, there needs to be three units of perlite. So it's one to three ratio. So you add the cement, fill up one cup, uh, thin it out with some water, and then mix it together in a appropriate mixing container with three units of perlite. And that will yield kind of a Rice Krispies treat, pre-hardened, gooey, thermally, um, extremely insulating material. And that is the reason we have coiled rebar or tie wire to, to serve as rebar. Um, and this has been tightened to, to grab, to exert inward pressure so that even through the thermal contraction and expansion of the furnace core, it will retain its structural integrity fairly well and should only need periodic relining of the inner core. The, the majority of the structure should be fine. The next video I'll show is with uh, refractory cement cured and then we will move on to making the lid and the final outer cement core. See you next time.